Good morning, everybody. GCBC, this is Pastor Frank here. Welcome to the Sunday School Hour. And our topic tonight, uh, today is going to be what crisis can reveal. A couple of announcements before we continue today. Pastor Peter is preaching in the morning service in just in a few minutes. And then later this afternoon, we're going to have an evangelistic kind of a recognition ceremony online for the kids from Vacation Bible School. So make sure you invite your neighbors, your Selingan, especially tonight. I will be preaching tonight and then delivering an evangelistic type of message and also to challenge sa mga believers. So, I hope to see you tonight also again and of course in the next hour when Pastor Peter is going to preach. Our topic this morning is what crisis can reveal. What crisis can reveal. And before I read our Bible verses, uh, I'd like to uh, share to you that we are in crisis. This is the COVID-19 crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it is epidemic, pandemic, and it is uh, everything that you can think of it is right now. And it's not good. We haven't met physically as a one church body together since March 22, physically. Though we are meeting online virtually, you know, it's, it's plan B, but it's definitely, surely not plan A. I praise the Lord for the day that we can meet together again and then have GCBC Auditorium fully packed with Christians and, and unbelievers uh, who are who are thirsty for the Word of God. They want to know God. I'm excited what God is going to do. Can you imagine when we meet back in church and then maybe your neighbors who got saved during the Bible studies, during the crisis, the pandemic, maybe they will come with you to church and we can see them get saved and baptized. And what a great blessing that would be. Psalm 139 in your Bibles, please. Psalm 139. I want to read to you Psalm 139, and then we're going to pray, and then I'll talk about our topic this morning. Psalm 139, verse number 23, and verse number 24. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. The Bible says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning, as we go through the scriptures, Lord, as we uh, dive into the word of God, I pray, Lord, that you would just use it, Lord, to open our hearts, God, to reveal to us what we need to be, what we need to change to be, and Lord, the things that we need to get right and repent of. Lord, I pray this morning, Sunday school hour, that you just bless it in a special way. And we pray this name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to say it like this. Many of you have heard this quote before. The quote is, Crisis doesn't build character, it reveals it. Crisis does not build character, it reveals it. And that is true, but I have a I have a sumpai for that. It can also reveal so much more. See, crisis reveals your character. It doesn't build your character. Crisis is not a time that your character gets built, though there is some element to that. It's really a time when your character gets revealed. I think of the the first responders, the frontliners. Whenever there's a crisis, the frontliners and the first responders, they run towards the disaster, but the ones who are not the frontliners and first responders, they run away from the disaster. And, uh, I believe that crisis reveals uh, many things about us, not just our character, but it also reveals much more. Today, I want to share to you five things that I have seen that are revealed during crisis. Now, I adapted this outline from Pastor Paul Chapel, and I made it fit to our audience, Dire sa Pilipinas. And I hope this is a blessing to you. So as we go through it, I'd like for you to take notes, put it in your notebook, or put it in the in the side of your Bible there, or on, or on the note page of your Bible. Uh, but I want to talk to you about this today, and I believe this will be a great blessing to us. The Bible tells us that even our brothers are born enduring adversity. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. During the crisis, some of you have don't even realize it, but you have gained close friends who will be with you friends for the rest of your life because of adversity. I think right now at the church, at, at the, at the uh, property of the church, the Bible students have got trapped. They, have, they spent their whole summer on the campus of the church, okay? Of course, that's because of government lockdown. Di pwede mo lockout, di pwede magbiyahe. And then the staff there also, and maybe in your house, uh, the family has lots of family time. Pastor, 
too much family time. Uh, nice before you pray for family time. Now you have family time. And then now you pray there's no more family time. Uh, but it's a very funny thing what's happening. But uh, even in crisis, uh, your true friends are revealed because a brother is born for adversity. Well, I want to share to you something that is going to be uh, really tabang jud ka, not tabang, tabang ka ayo. It's going to be a big help to you. Uh, but I want to share this from my heart about uh, about what I'm going to about to share. Isaiah chapter six verse ten says this: Make the heart of his people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Now this is speaking uh, to regarding Isaiah, to the audience that he'll be preaching to, that he would preach hard the words of God, the judgment of God. I want to share to you some things uh, uh, you know, that God has revealed to me, and I believe that these are all lined up biblically. If we go back to our main text, you're going to see a couple words here. The Bible says, search me. Underline that in your Bibles. Verse 23, Psalm 139, verse 23. The Bible says, search me. I want you to underline the next verse the next two words try me try me remember these two words these two prayers go together as one prayer when you say lord search me then you also have to pray god try me because you cannot be searched without having a trial the trial will reveal who you are the trial is going to reveal things about you you know the reason why there's many uh bagong believers and backslide because of a trial. The trial uh, showed them who they really were. And instead of going to God, they went away from God. And listen, trials will do that. God will use a crisis to bring us close to Him. That is the plan of God. The Bible says in John 15 uh, that, uh, that God uh, uh, ordained us that we should bring forth fruit. So God wants us to be fruitful. God does not want us to fall away from God. He wants us to continue in God. So to do that, God brings crisis into our lives. Dr. Tom Malone, the preacher from Pontiac, Michigan, said, God does not waste a crisis. God does not waste a crisis. So number one, please, number one, what does crisis do? Number one, it reveals your spiritual desires. Number one, it reveals your spiritual desires. Right now, you might be saying, Pastor, I cannot wait. I want to go back to normal. I cannot wait to get back to normal church services. I cannot wait to get back to normal. But you're, maybe that might be your mindset. But can I ask you, don't you have a mindset that says, even though I'm not attending church physically, I will be faithful to the church, be sub live stream. I will be faithful to read my Bible. I will be faithful to pray. You know, your desires are revealed during crisis. You will find out quickly what is most important to you. I heard about uh, the Titanic. The Titanic was sinking the boat. Some of you know the story of the boat. You know, I'm the king of the world, that, that movie. It was a real story. It really happened. When the boat was going down, the rich Donia was on the boat. And they said, ma'am, quickly, all of the rich, all of the rich, uh, all of the mga dato, you have the first, uh, you have the first uh, choice to get on the lifeboat. And the mga pobre kay last choice. So they're rescuing the rich people first. And then the ladies, and then the, and then the children, of course, and then the men were, were last. But they're rescuing all the Doña, and then the Doña has all of these jewelries in her room. And then she went back in her room, and when she went in the room, they're watching her. Instead of getting the jewelries, she went and she got two oranges, uh, fruits. And they said, ma'am, what about the jewelry? She said, they will do nothing for me now but I will need this for later. And she went and she brought the fruits with her. You see, crisis will reveal your desires. Crisis will reveal uh, what is most uh, important to you, especially in that time. Can I ask you, is your desire to be Christ-like growing? During quarantine, during the COVID-19 pandemic, is your desire to grow in Christ, is it growing? Are you growing in Christ? Say, Pastor, because I believe that the crisis has revealed 
my desire is not what it should be. Uh, my desire has been to do this, 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 everything else, but my desire has not been to grow in the Lord. Crisis reveals who you are. I heard of the guy who was driving down the road in uh, his nice fancy car and he bought a brand new Rolex. And then, of course, you know, this is the streets of Tondo, Manila, of course, you know, very dangerous. And then he's driving down there and then a kawatan came with a espada and cut his hand off. And then he shag it ang, ang driver. Kay, what nai, what nai, what nai koan? Putol lang yun, putol. Putlan ka ayo. Ni shag it, hala, akong Rolex. Okay. So if you understand that, ang iyang kabalaka, dili iyang kumut, ang iyang kabalaka, ang iyang relo. Why? Because crisis reveals what is most important to you. Can I ask you, what is your desire during this during the COVID-19 pandemic? Is your desire just to get back to church because you miss your friends? Is your desire just to, uh, you know, get back out and suroy-suroy again? Laag, oh, pastor, but did you kaayog? Di ko pwede mo laag. No, no. What's what's what is what are your desires? See, crisis reveals what our desires are. Number two, please. Number two, crisis reveals your doctrinal convictions. Crisis reveals your doctrinal convictions. Let me just. I'm not going to go through the scriptures, but let me just let, name you some men. I think of Daniel in the Bible. Daniel was a man who was very intellectual. He was a mathematician, a scientist a historian, a geologist, I mean a chemist. He was all those things wrapped in one. He was a very intelligent man. He was so intelligent that the government that came in to take over the kingdom of the Hebrews, the kingdom of the Jews, they said, let's spare him because we can use him. He has a very high IQ. He's a very smart man. Let's just retrain him in our culture. And that was the story of Daniel. Daniel was happy to live. He was not one of the people who died because because the, the new government spared him, along with his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you know the story, in the book of Daniel. But the Bible says that in the book of Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Understand this, there's doctrinal conviction. So what happened was, they came to Daniel, they said, come on Daniel, you must eat the meat and eat the food offered to the idols. And if you do that, you're accepting our gods. And Daniel said, I will not accept your gods. I will not eat the, fruit, the, the food and the meat that you give to the idols. Because if I do that, I will be approving of the idol worship. And he said, just give me something else. Give me vegetables to eat, but I will not eat that that idolatry food and uh, his convictions were tested it was a time of crisis and of course he proved that his uh, God was the real God amen uh, but I think of Daniel I think of David you see David was told by his father Jesse Jesse his father said bring this food to your kuya he's in the battlefield bring this food to him and um, bring the food and come back when he brought the food to his brother he looked and he saw Goliath and Goliath was saying bad words he was saying words that put down the God of Israel and David said is there not a cause is there not somebody here who will stand up and fight this giant the world should know, all the people should know that there is a God in Israel. See, it was a time of crisis. Everybody there in that moment was scared of Goliath. But there was only one boy around 16 years old that was not afraid of the giant. And his name was David. He was not king yet. He was just a boy. But that small red-headed boy took five stones, he only needed one, and he killed the giant with a terador. You see, crisis reveals who you really are. Crisis reveals your doctrinal convictions. I think of Stephen in the Bible. Stephen was there and he was preaching the word of God in Acts chapter 7. He was preaching hard to the people and the people have stones in their hands. And their hands are getting ready go to go back and throw the stones. But at the last, at the very last moment, he did not stop preaching. He kept on preaching 
even as they threw stones at him. And he became the first martyr of the local New Testament church. When we go to heaven one day, we'll be able to meet preacher Stephen, the first martyr of the local New Testament church. He Listen, it was a time of crisis. Many people would run the other way. Many people would say, okay, never mind, forget it. Erase, erase, erase. No, don't mind what I said. Please go about your business. But no, during that crisis, he stood in there because crisis reveals your doctrinal convictions. I think of those martyrs. Right now, society, right now, culture, and right now, the government is going to put us in positions that reveal our convictions in the last days. You know, right now, uh, the constitutionally, the law that is banning churches to have worship is unconstitutional. We have the right to free exercise of worship. Remember that word, free exercise of worship. But the government has banned churches from worshiping. Now, of course, we render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. We obey Caesar. But the question is, what is Caesar's? See, listen, the church is the church of God, not the church of Caesar. There is a separation of church and state. So when will it come? What, what if the government says that you cannot meet for church until 2023? What are we going to do? Unsa atong buhaton? You see, in these last days, inevitably, that means unavoidably. It, it, it's impossible to, to avoid. It will happen that our convictions doctrinally will be tested. Remember the prayer of David? He says, search me and try me. So number one, it reveals our spiritual desires. Number two, it reveals our your doctrinal convictions. And then number three, please, number three. It reveals your choice for service. It reveals your choice for service. I want to share to you some scriptures here. Go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16, please. Romans 1, 16, and some of you have, are, are familiar already with this uh, scripture. But Romans 1, 16 says this. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Listen, gospel of Christ Baptist Church, the power is in the gospel. That's why it's the name of our church. There is power in the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ can change the palahubog into a sober man. The gospel of Christ can change the drug addict into a soul winner. The gospel of Christ can change the uh, the womanizer man uh, with many different uyab and make him into a faithful husband. This is what the gospel can do. Pero mangi ingsunan, tanawa sa verse number 16, to everyone that believeth. Can I ask you, do you believe that the gospel is still powerful? Do you believe the gospel can still save? In James chapter 1 verse 27, I want to show you something here that is a good reminder to us of what we should be doing in these last days, okay? James chapter 1, verse 27. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. So the Bible declares that if we're going to live for the Lord and serve God, then there must be people we reach, the fatherless, the orphans, the ones who don't have a father. The Bible does not say here the motherless. It says the fatherless. And there's something different about a child that does not have a father. The Bible says as Christians, Christian men and as members of the local church, we must be reaching out specifically to the fatherless. Notice another group and the widows in their affliction. The affliction of a Buddha is unique. The Bible records it that the widow has an affliction. Now we know later on that the Bible says in Timothy that there is a different kind of widow. There is a widow and there's a widow indeed. A widow is somebody who's husband has died but the children can take care of her a widow indeed is somebody that is married but the children cannot take care of her maybe the children are too young or maybe the children are gone or dead and though that is what we call a widow indeed there's nobody to take care of her the bible says that this is what we should be doing can i ask you this question 
Have you what have you chosen for service? Unsay ang imong ministry during the COVID-19 pandemic? Pastor, igo what kind ministry? Now you can have a ministry. You can do something ang imong balay kay tapad sa tapad sa another balay. You you have a cell phone, you have a way to communicate to people. But it reveals our choice for service. Hey, let's not forget to serve ang mga underprivileged. Let's not forget to serve them. Let's not forget to reach out to them. Let's not forget to show them how much God loves them. It reveals our choice for service. Number three, it reveals our choice for service. Let me review quickly and then we'll go to number four. Number one, it reveals our spiritual desires. Crisis also, number two, reveals our doctrinal convictions. And then number three, crisis reveals our choice for service. And number four, it reveals your wisdom. Crisis reveals your wisdom. Say, Pastor, patay. Wak ko kasabot. Ani, Pastor? Pastor, I don't understand what's going on. But do you know right now, there are people who studied Revelation? Remember in Sunday school, we are talking about Revelation just a few months ago? We are talking about what will happen in the last days. And then all of a sudden, boom, it happens. And now, because we were listening to the church met, church services, we were listening to the preaching, we were prepared ahead of time spiritually. We carry into the crisis wisdom. This is the reason why it's very important to attend Sunday school. Maone ang reason nga importante kaayo ang imong attendance for the church services. Be on time. Don't be late. Go to church. Bring your Bible. Bring your notebook. Take notes. You're you're hungry for the Word of God, so you're 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 feeding the Word of God and you're busug on the Word of God. And the Word of God is changing you. Kasi na application. It reveals. Your wisdom. Can I ask you, is your wisdom growing during the pandemic? Or are you able to see things clearly? Right now, uh, I don't have the picture with me right now, but right now in the Philippines, Governor Garcia of Cebu is going to require RFID chip to all tourists who come to Cebu. Required to buy and required to wear. I don't believe it's the insert kind. Most likely a bracelet or a necklace or maybe some kind of sling or lanyard. Something like that. I don't think it's microchip insert yet, but one day it will be. Isn't it amazing how it's exactly what we talked about? How in the last days there will be a new world order, a cashless society, so that they'll be able to trace every peso and where it was spent and who spent it. Isn't that scary that that if you example if you get 10,000 pesos from your from your job from your work then the government will be able to know where every peso was spent without you knowing it they they can trace everything down they can trace it here they can trace it here they can trace it here and this is exactly what is going on right now during this pandemic RFID chips um 666 mark of the beast the technology already exists this is wisdom the Bible says in Revelation, uh, let he who has wisdom understand this. Here is wisdom. The Bible continually says that in Revelation. Here is wisdom. Here is wisdom. Here is wisdom. And uh, during this pandemic, during crisis, it reveals our wisdom. Can I show you what the Bible says in James chapter 3, verse number 13? In James 3, verse 13, the Bible says, Who is a wise man? And endued with knowledge among you, let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Look at verse number 15. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work let me just stop there for a moment the bible says that our wisdom should be the wisdom that comes from god and not ginatawag wisdom gikan sa kalibutan listen don't get your wisdom from facebook don't get your wisdom from social media don't get your wisdom now there are times people share bible verses okay or not no problem maybe a man of god will share a quote like that hey that's good but our wisdom should always come from the bible don't let your wisdom come from the come but you know what's going to happen 
you might become a conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy theorists are the kinds of people that say, Oh, the world is not round. The world is flat. A conspiracy theorist will say, Oh, the deep state, the government is watching us. They put cameras in my house. They're listening on my cell phone. And there is, of course, there is some technology that does that. But don't let that conspiracy theory, Oh, we never landed on the moon. That was all fake pictures and all these things. Um, 666, Illuminati. Oh, you you know, Rizal is Illuminati, Duterte is Illuminati. Hey, listen, let's not be conspiracy theorists. Let's keep ourselves focused on the power of the gospel. Remember Romans 1.16? Remember that? It is the power of God to everyone that believeth. Amen? It is the power of God to everyone that believeth. And let the gospel still be the center of your life during crisis. It reveals your wisdom. Let us control our tongues. Let us control ourselves, our emotions, and all those things during the COVID-19 pandemic. You know what's a good thing? Whenever you, whenever you get on social media, you don't have to comment and post on everything you see. Okay? Don't be a keypad warrior. Don't be a touchscreen theologian. Just let it go. Okay? I like that song that Disney sings, Let It Go, Let It Go. Amen? And uh, for some of you who have children, Okay, but uh, it reveals our wisdom. So number one, it reveals our spiritual desires. Crisis, that's what it does. Crisis reveals, number two, our doctrinal convictions. Number three, crisis reveals our choice for service. Let me ask you again, where are you serving God? What are you doing for God right now? Are you sharing the gospel? Are you reaching out? H have you called somebody since since church got canceled? H have you called somebody and told them, Hey, how are you? We miss you in church. Number four, it reveals your wisdom. And then number five, number five, it reveals our, it reveals your purpose. It reveals your purpose. What is the most important thing or things in your life right now? You don't have to answer that question because the crisis will reveal it. Let me say it again. What is the most important thing in your life right now? You don't have to answer it because the crisis has already revealed what's important to you. Pastor Frank, what do you mean? During the crisis, during the COVID-19 pandemic, what is the most important thing to you during this pandemic? Have you spent time with God? Are you more worried about money? Are you more worried about things that don't matter? Pastor, what, is, what has happened? I would think, I would pray that most likely you realize a couple of things. The most important thing in your life is Jesus Christ and your relationship with God. And now you can spend more time in the Word of God, spend more time in the Bible. Maybe, maybe I hope and pray that that is the case, but I, I don't know. Can I ask you this question? Is the COVID-19 crisis, is it revealing to you what is your purpose? Let's keep the main thing the main thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And then let me show you what the Bible says quickly in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 31. The Bible says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Amen? Hey, what are you doing for Christ this time? What is your purpose? You know, the, the most important thing is the, to keep the most important thing the most important thing. Let me say it again. The most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing. What is that, Pastor? To keep the main thing the main thing because that is the main thing. Pastor, what is that? It's the Great Commission. It's to continue to evangelize, continue to baptize, and to, to continue to disciple because God said one day He's coming back and He will reckon all of us as Christians and He's gonna, and we will be held accountable for what we did for God. Praise the Lord for a crisis because the crisis reveals to us who we really are. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 says something that's very shocking to us, but I want to show it to you quickly here. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12, what a great reminder this is. Look at the Bible, Revelation 5 12, saying with a loud voice, 
Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Worthy. Here's, here's, my, here's my conclusion. The most worthy thing you could ever live for in your life. Worthy. The idea of worthy means worth it. Worth. Unsai ang worth. Is, is being a Christian worth it? Is, is, is the crisis revealing to you what is really worth it? Is it really worth it for me to give my tithes? Bisag struggle gamay? Is it really worth it for me to give my missions? Bisag naglisud ko gamay? Yes, it's worth it because He is worthy. And if God is worthy, it is worth it. Continue, mga iksunan. Continue in the in the fellowship of the believers. Continue in church. Continue in giving. Continue in, in soul winning. Continue in the word of God, in praying, in reading the Bible. Give attendance to the word of God. I think of what the Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 23. In Psalm 139 verse 23, it says, search me. In Psalm 139 verse 23, it says, try me. You see what happens during quarantine, what happens during crisis is that God begins to search you. Can I ask you that question? Are you willing to allow God to search you? Pastor, I think he already did. Why? Because he tried me. Remember, this trial right now is revealing to us who we really are as a church. What are the spiritual desires of GCBC members? What are the doctrinal convictions of GCBC members? What are what is our choice for service? What are we doing to serve God? What is our wisdom? You're realizing now how important it was to be in Sunday school, aren't you? You realize you're realizing now how important it was to attend midweek service. Maybe before you thought, oh, it's not so important. I'll just go next week. Pero karon gyud naka realize gyud ka hala importante di ay because right now your faith is challenged. The crisis has revealed a lack of wisdom. And then, it reveals our purpose. Can I ask you, what's your purpose? What are you, what's the reason why you, you do what you do as a Christian? Why do you give? Why do you serve? Why, why do you love others? Why do you go soul winning? Why? Pastor, it's, it, it, it's lisud. It, it's, it, it takes a lot of work. It's costly. It's an investment, yes, but it's worth it. Why? Because Jesus Christ is worthy. Crisis may help you to reveal your priorities. Crisis may help you to renew your purpose. Crisis may help you to revive your spirit. And I hope that's the case. However, there are Christians right now who are struggling. I know, especially Dili sa GCBC lang, sa tanan mga simbahan, all over sa kalibutan, daghan mga kristyano, daghan mga kristuhanon, nag-struggle gyud kaayo. Why? Because they were not ready for the crisis. The crisis has revealed what the problems really are inside. Try me, search me, and try me. Ask God right now, ask God, what this crisis has revealed, sulud sa imong kagulingon. Sulud sa imong kasing-kasing, what has the crisis revealed? Could you ask God that question? Could you ask God that question as I pray? Why don't you pray also there sa, sa you know, lingkuranan mo or sa higdaanan, wherever you are right now. Why don't you just take time to pray quickly that God would work in your heart. Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, and I'm blessed, Lord, to be saved. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, that even during a crisis like this, Lord, that you have allowed it to reveal who we really are. I thank you, Lord, for the good fruit that has been shown. But, Lord, I also pray right now, Lord, for those Christians who are struggling, especially even at GCBC, God. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them. Lord, help us to encourage them, God. And, Lord, I pray for all of us, Lord, including myself, Lord, that we would be the fruitful and better Christians we need to be and that crisis would reveal who we really are so that we can know what to fix and what to repent of. 
so that we can be what you made us to be. Lord, you declared that even before time, that you declare that we as your children are fruitful. And you, Lord, you preordained it that we're fruitful. So Lord, help us, Lord, to be fruitful. Convict us when we're not. Help us to get those things right in our lives. And Lord, I pray a special blessing of prayer for GCBC, mga members karon, especially nag struggle, Jude. I pray that you just speak to them, strengthen them, give them more grace. I pray this name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, once again, Pastor Peter is going to be preaching next hour. And then uh, if you guys want to uh, uh, put some comments there, some prayer requests, no problem. That would be great. And then uh, we'll see you at later at 5 p.m. also for the uh, VBS uh, Award Recognition Program. Okay, It'll be online. Everything will be online. And then tonight we have a special announcement of what, how we're going to do things going forward. Okay, so we'll see you tonight, and then we'll see you in a few minutes, of course. So God bless you.